Hello teacher trainees and welcome to yet another class on curriculum studies. Today we are going to look at curriculum design. After this class remember to click on the link in the description which has the revision questions for this topic. Let's begin our lesson. Curriculum design refers to the process of creating a plan for teaching and learning. It involves deciding on the content, methods, and resources that will be used to teach a particular subject or course. Curriculum design is an essential aspect of education because it ensures that students receive a coherent and comprehensive education that meets their needs and prepares them for future opportunities. Effective curriculum design involves several key steps. The first step is to identify the learning objectives or outcomes that students should achieve through the curriculum. These outcomes should be aligned with the overall goals of education and be measurable so that progress can be tracked. The second step is to develop content and materials that support the achievement of these outcomes. This may involve selecting textbooks, creating lesson plans, and developing assessments. The third step is to design instructional strategies that will help students achieve the desired outcomes. This may involve selecting teaching methods, such as lectures, discussions, or hands-on activities, and creating opportunities for practice and feedback. Finally, the curriculum design process should include a plan for evaluating student progress and making adjustments to the curriculum as needed. This may involve conducting assessments and using the results to improve instruction and modify the curriculum over time. Overall, effective curriculum design is an essential component of education, ensuring that students receive a comprehensive and meaningful learning experience that prepares them for success in the future. There are several attributes that are important to consider when designing a curriculum in curriculum development. These attributes help ensure that the curriculum is effective and relevant to the needs of the students, the educational institution, and the society at large. Here are some of the key attributes of a well-designed curriculum. Number 1. Clear Learning Objectives A well-designed curriculum should have clear and specific learning objectives that are measurable and aligned with the overall goals of education. These objectives should guide the development of content, materials, and instructional strategies. Number 2. Relevant content. The content of the curriculum should be relevant to the needs and interests of the students, as well as to the society in which they live. The content should be current, accurate, and presented in a way that is accessible to students of all abilities. Number 3. Effective instructional strategies. The curriculum should include a variety of instructional strategies that are designed to engage students and promote deep learning. These strategies should be aligned with the learning objectives and should take into account the needs and interests of the students. Number 4. Authentic assessment. Assessment is an important part of the curriculum design process and assessments should be authentic and aligned with the learning objectives. Assessments should provide students with opportunities to demonstrate their learning in meaningful ways and provide feedback to both students and instructors. Number 5. Flexibility. The curriculum should be designed to be flexible and adaptable to the needs of different students as well as to changes in the educational environment. This may involve incorporating new technologies, addressing changing societal needs, or responding to changes in educational policy. 6. Coherence. The curriculum should be designed to be coherent and integrated, with clear connections between different courses or subjects. This helps students to develop a deep and comprehensive understanding of the material. 7. Inclusivity. The curriculum should be designed to be inclusive and should reflect the diversity of the students and the society in which they live. This includes considerations of culture, language, gender, and other factors that may impact student learning. Overall, a well-designed curriculum should be clear, relevant, engaging, and inclusive, with a focus on student learning and a commitment to ongoing improvement. Let's look at the principles of curriculum design in curriculum development. 
When developing a curriculum, it is important to apply the principles of curriculum design to ensure that the curriculum is effective and meets the needs of the students and the educational institution. Here are some ways to apply the principles of curriculum design in curriculum development. 1. Define clear learning objectives. Identify the key learning objectives that students should achieve through the curriculum. These objectives should be specific, measurable, and aligned with the overall goals of education. 2. Develop relevant content. Develop content that is relevant to the needs and interests of the students, as well as to the society in which they live. The content should be current, accurate, and presented in a way that is accessible to students of all abilities. 3. Incorporate effective instructional strategies. Select instructional strategies that are designed to engage students and promote deep learning. These strategies should be aligned with the learning objectives and should take into account the needs and interests of the students. 4. Use authentic assessment. Develop assessments that are authentic and aligned with the learning objectives. Assessments should provide students with opportunities to demonstrate their learning in meaningful ways and provide feedback to both students and instructors. 5. Ensure flexibility. Design the curriculum to be flexible and adaptable to the needs of different students, as well as to changes in the educational environment. This may involve incorporating new technologies, addressing changing societal needs, or responding to changes in educational policy. 6. Promote coherence. Develop a curriculum that is coherent and integrated with clear connections between different courses or subjects. This helps students to develop a deep and comprehensive understanding of the material. 7. Prioritize inclusivity. Design the curriculum to be inclusive and reflective of the diversity of the students and the society in which they live. Considerations of culture, language, gender, and other factors that may impact student learning should be prioritized. By applying these principles of curriculum design, the curriculum will be more effective in promoting student learning and meeting the needs of the educational institution and the society at large. Now let's take a look at curriculum designs from other countries. There are many different curriculum designs used in countries around the world, and examining these designs can provide insight into different approaches to education. Here are a few examples of curriculum designs from other countries. Finland The Finnish curriculum design is known for its emphasis on student-centered learning, with a focus on promoting equity and providing individualized support for students. The curriculum is designed to be flexible and adaptable, with a focus on critical thinking and problem-solving skills. Singapore The Singaporean curriculum design is known for its emphasis on science, math, and technology education, with a focus on building a strong foundation in these subjects. The curriculum is designed to be rigorous and comprehensive, with a strong focus on testing and assessment. Canada the Canadian curriculum design is known for its emphasis on multiculturalism and inclusivity, with a focus on promoting social justice and equity. The curriculum is designed to be flexible and adaptable, with a focus on interdisciplinary learning and building skills in communication, collaboration, and critical thinking. Japan the Japanese curriculum design is known for its emphasis on traditional academic subjects, with a focus on rote learning and memorization. The curriculum is designed to be highly structured and standardized, with a focus on high-stakes testing and assessment. South Africa The South African curriculum design is known for its emphasis on promoting social justice and equity, with a focus on addressing historical inequalities and promoting diversity. The curriculum is designed to be flexible and adaptable, with a focus on interdisciplinary learning and building skills in communication, collaboration, and critical thinking. In Kenya, the current curriculum design is known as the Competency-Based Curriculum, CBC. This curriculum is designed to be learner-centered and focused on building competencies and skills that are relevant to the needs of the society. The curriculum is designed to be flexible and adaptable, with a focus on interdisciplinary learning and building skills in communication, collaboration, and critical thinking. 
the CBC is designed to be implemented in all levels of education from early childhood education to secondary school. Next, we look at the components of a curriculum design in Kenya. Curriculum design in Kenya is governed by the Kenya Institute of Curriculum Development, KICD, which is responsible for developing and reviewing the national curriculum for all levels of education. The components of a curriculum design in Kenya include the following. Number 1. Goals and Objectives. The curriculum design outlines the overall goals and objectives that are expected to be achieved by the learners. This includes the knowledge, skills, and attitudes that learners should possess at the end of a particular level of education. Number 2. Content. The curriculum design specifies the content that should be covered in each subject area. This includes the topics, concepts, and themes that are relevant to the subject and level of education. The content is designed to be relevant to the needs of the learners and the society in general. Number 3. Teaching and Learning Methods The curriculum design specifies the teaching and learning methods that should be used in each subject area. This includes both formal and informal methods of instruction, such as lectures, group discussions, practical exercises, and field trips. Number 4. Assessment and Evaluation The curriculum design outlines the methods and tools that should be used to assess the progress and achievements of the learners. This includes both formative and summative assessments, as well as methods for evaluating the effectiveness of the curriculum itself. Number 5. Resources and Materials The curriculum design specifies the resources and materials that are required to support the teaching and learning process. This includes textbooks, laboratory equipment, ICT tools, and other resources that are necessary for effective instruction. Number 6. Implementation and Monitoring the curriculum design outlines the procedures for implementing the curriculum and monitoring its effectiveness. This includes the roles and responsibilities of various stakeholders, such as teachers, school administrators, and education officials. Overall, the curriculum design in Kenya is designed to provide a comprehensive and relevant education to learners while also preparing them for the challenges of the modern world. Let's familiarize ourselves with the scope and sequence chart in curriculum design. A scope and sequence chart is a tool used in curriculum design to help educators plan the progression of learning over time. It outlines the scope of the curriculum or what content will be covered and the sequence or the order in which that content will be taught. Here is an example of a scope and sequence chart for a fictional elementary school science curriculum. Subject Science Grade 1, Scope 1. Plants 2. Animals 3. Materials and their properties 4. Forces and Motion, Sequence, Unit 1. Plants, Characteristics of Plants, Parts of Plants, Life Cycle of a Plant. Unit 2. Animals, Characteristics of Animals, Parts of Animals, Life Cycle of an Animal, Unit 3. Materials and their properties, properties of materials, solid, liquid, gas, uses of materials, changing materials. Unit 4. Forces and motion, push and pull, gravity, simple machines. In this chart, the scope of the science curriculum for grade 1 is broken down into four units, each focused on a specific topic. The sequence of the units is designed to build on prior knowledge and skills. For example, students learn about the characteristics of plants and animals before moving on to study their life cycles. Similarly, the unit on forces and motion introduces concepts like push and pull before moving on to more complex ideas like gravity and simple machines. A scope and sequence chart like this one can be used to help teachers plan lessons and assessments that align with the curriculum goals. It also helps to ensure that students receive a comprehensive and developmentally appropriate education over time. So what are the considerations of a curriculum design in curriculum implementation? Curriculum design is an important part of the education process, but it is only effective if it is successfully implemented in the classroom. 
Here are some key considerations for curriculum implementation. Teacher training. Teachers need to be trained in the new curriculum to ensure they understand the goals, objectives, content, and methods outlined in the curriculum design. Professional development programs and workshops can help teachers build the skills and knowledge they need to implement the curriculum effectively. Resources and materials. Curriculum implementation requires resources and materials that support the teaching and learning process. These may include textbooks, teaching aids, technology, and other materials that help teachers deliver effective instruction and support student learning. Time management. Curriculum implementation can be time-consuming, so it's important to plan the use of time carefully. Teachers may need to adjust their lesson plans and schedules to accommodate new content or teaching methods, and students may need extra time to practice new skills or complete assignments. Assessment and evaluation. Curriculum implementation should include regular assessment and evaluation to measure student progress and the effectiveness of the curriculum. Teachers should use a variety of assessment methods, such as tests, projects, and observations, to evaluate student learning and adjust their instruction as needed. Stakeholder engagement. Successful curriculum implementation requires collaboration among all stakeholders, including teachers, school administrators, students, and parents. Regular communication and feedback can help ensure that everyone is aligned and working together to achieve the goals of the curriculum. Continuous improvement. Curriculum implementation is an ongoing process that requires continuous improvement. Feedback from students, teachers, and other stakeholders can be used to refine the curriculum design and improve its effectiveness over time. By focusing on these key considerations, curriculum designers and educators can ensure that their curriculum is successfully implemented in the classroom and that students receive a high-quality education that prepares them for the future. And that marks the end of our lesson on curriculum design. Please remember to click on the link in the description which has the revision questions for this topic. Also subscribe to this channel and like the video so that anytime we upload a new video YouTube will always notify you. Thanks and have a good day.